So we, we, we're going to just begin here. I'll, I'll preach, as I say to the people, I will preach right off the cuff. And uh, you will probably hear things a little bit different. I'm not going to tell you really how a leader, in a sense, I will tell you how a leader looks like. But I want to tell you how to function as a leader, how to begin to receive from Jesus. And that you can make an impact in the world. We have tried too long in our own strength and our own ability up to this day. And it's time that Jesus being manifesting through us. There's one thing, you, we, all of us that is here today, we do have the presence of Jesus in us. Do you agree with me? If you are born again, you receive the presence of Jesus. You receive the fullness of Jesus Christ in you. But the difference is, that, is the manifestation of his presence in your life. Don't you guys agree with me on that? And uh, this is what we will con concentrate on, that you come to the place that Jesus manifests in your life and through your life and touch people's lives that's that's what's going to change the world people uh, uh, we have we have done church now for 24 years me and my wife uh, that we are in ministry and uh, serve and plant churches and minister to people we have seen it all we have experienced it all we have been in places there is not a move of god that people can say that we have not experienced have seen we have seen the flesh. We have seen flesh in our own lives. <laughs> we, have, we have made mistakes, huge mistakes. Um, we are not perfect. There's not one person in the kingdom of God that is perfect. I can guarantee you that. Uh, the only person that is perfect, his name is Jesus. I remember that, um, I remember that when I, uh, the first church that I pastored in South Africa, we had a huge band, music team, and uh, I was very young. I came out of a militaristic background. So everything had to be in straight lines and everything had to work in order. <laughs> and uh, so the, the music team had complications among them. There was no unity, but they didn't want me to allow, allow me to get in to uh, deal with the, the problems there. So one Sunday morning, I just fired them from the pulpit. <laughs> All of them. And, and that's the fastest that I had a board meeting, <laughs> three o'clock that afternoon with the whole music team. And uh, I, I was just fed up all, all the stuff, but, I, but irresponsible, young, dumb, don't know how to deal with things. So I just took it in my own hands and I basically messed it up big time in one, in five minutes. And uh, we had a board meeting that afternoon and, and I put on the full armor of God. And I said, I'm ready for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Linda is standing there with me and we, we dress up and we are ready. Stupid. <laughs> and uh, so, so I went into this, into this meeting and uh, everybody was saying their thing and just going on. One of the elders say later on, well, let's hear what Pastor Peter is on his heart. And the moment that I begin to try to speak, tears pop out of my eyes. And I cannot speak a one word. I'm not sad, but I'm crying. <laughs> And I say, Lord, this is embarrassing. And I'm just sitting there like that. And, and it was a tile floor like this, exactly like this. And, and it was form a dam on the ground. While I, I'm just sitting there, I can't stop it. It's just running out of me. And uh, while I was crying, they begin to solve the problem among themselves. <laughs> and uh, we, we walk out of that place, uh, uh, the biggest friends ever. And, and loving one another, and, and it was just a, a move of God. It was just Jesus, you know. I was ready to fight, but Jesus was ready for something else. Are you with me? And, and we, we need to learn that, that, that Jesus always took the road that we never expect. He will always do things that we, that we would never expect. And, and through the years, I've, I, I've learned things. I've seen uh, things happen in the body of Christ. Uh, me, myself, have hurt people. Me, myself, have disappointed people. But over the years, we have been growing and we have seen things. And, and, and I was a stage in my own life that I didn't want to go to church anymore, that I didn't want to see Christians anymore. I want to live on a highland island trained with Rottweilers that bite only Christians. <laughs> and and, and this, this is where I wanted to be. But God, by His grace, came and saved Peter. Not from hell and from sin as when I came to Jesus. But he saved me from myself in ministry. Are you guys with me? Yeah. And, and that's, that, that, that's what most of us need. <laughs> is need to be saved from ourselves. Say self. 
and, and today we, we want to look at that. If we talk about law-driven, if we talk about law-driven ministry, then it means that you are doing things in the kingdom of God to get God's favor and the favor of other people. This is, this is when we talk about law-driven uh, uh, um, uh, leadership, when we talk about passionate grace leadership, then it means you receive the ability of Jesus Christ to do what you cannot do in your own ability. Isn't, isn't that awesome? And, and this is where God is taking us. God wants you to come to that place that you function in the kingdom of God, that you would come out of a meeting and say, that was not me. Are you with me? I didn't try anything. Barry and Lorraine, there are seats for you guys right there, right in front of Sue. Okay, you can sit at the table. Welcome, ladies. You missed an hour's teaching. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. Amen. So, so if, we, if we talk about uh, uh, passionate grace leadership, then it means we are in a position that we receive from God. Say receive. You got to understand what I'm saying to you right now, which is really important. Anything that we do in the kingdom of God is what you have received from God. Are you with me? The new covenant is built on this principle. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Say receive. receive. Everything is about receive. There is no other way that you can do this. It's about receiving from Jesus. Are you with me? And God wants, we, we, we will talk about the overflow principle in, in a while. In just, I want to read to you something that Andrew Friesen posted this week on Facebook. Some of you don't know Andrew Friesen. Andrew Friesen was here last week, year. In our conference, he is from uh, Colombia. He's actually from Winnipeg, Canada, but he's a missionary to to uh, Colombia. Him and his wife. And this is what he say: It is impossible to understand things without contrast. For example, we understand light because there is darkness. In order to understand the gospel, there must be contrast. Some say the contrast is sin versus salvation, heaven versus versus hell, sickness versus health, etc. These concepts are true, however, there is something more radical. It is the contrast of law versus grace or human effort versus what God has done on the cross for us in Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome? So, so this is where we are. We have been saved from hell. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't that true? We have been saved from sin. Hell. But the thing is that we need to, to learn is that we need to get away from this thing that we try to do it in our own strength. Hallelujah. It's all going to depend on how much time you spend with Jesus. Yes, the point is, can you really enter in? Can you really receive in his presence? Can you really, do you really know what it means to be, to be hugged by God, to be filled with his love? I, do, you, do you really receive that or are you trying to do this thing in your own steam, in your own ability? Amen? Isn't that awesome? I went, uh, I'm telling you a lot of stories, but I went once to, to uh, Brazil some years ago, three, four years ago. I went to Brazil and, and this is what happened. I, uh, uh, I, I worked for a month doing renovations on my home and the day when I get on the plane, I think I still had my tool belt on. <laughs> because of all the work that I've done. And I was just tired. And I said, Lord, 14 days in Brazil, I'm going to preach in conferences. I just don't have the strength. I don't have the power. I didn't even prepare what, what I'm going to do, you know. And um, the Lord said to me, well, you've got 13 hours on the plane now <laughs> to spend time with me. And you know what? I begin to meditate on Christ in me, the hope of glory, for 13 hours. Can you believe that? The Holy Spirit just came on me. When we came into Brazil, the first night that we preached, the interpreter was the worst interpreter I ever had in my life. It was like, it was like I was speaking to that wall, and then the pen that wall would say something to the audience. It was, he didn't understand some of the words. He struggled to break through to the people. It, it was just, I just say later on to the Lord, Lord, this is ridiculous. I don't even know why I'm doing this. You know, so when we came to the end of the preaching, I begin to... Um, uh, uh, when we came to the, I, I begin to just pray in the spirit and say, Lord, what do you want to do? He said, make an altar call for healing. I said, uh, okay, all right. Here's the reality. I don't even think they hear the sermon. So, but I'm going to make the altar call. So I make the altar call and we had 40 confirmed healings in that night. One after the other. Even miraculous things happened. The second night, 70 confirmed healings. Miraculous things, one after the other. 
It was just God doing an awesome thing. You know why? It is God. It's not us. Are you with me? I have I've been in situations that, 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 that it was the most difficult situations that, that I thought, okay, yes, yes, no anointing, yes, no presence, that God just begin to move. Are you with me? So it's not about us. Say it's not about me. So let's look first at the yucky things. Say yucky things. Can we do that? And then we get that behind us. When we have dealt with the yucky things, because I want to, I just want to picture you, uh, give you a little bit of the picture of the church. Can I do that? And by that, I'm not judging. I want you to understand that. I'm, 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 I'm always saying to people, you need to understand where we are, what we deal with, and where we are. Can, can we do that? So number one, the church, we, we have to lay a sure foundation. If the foundation is not sure and strong, it is not a, master, a matter of if the house will fall. It is a matter of when the house will fall. Are you with me? Yeah. So we need to lay a strong foundation. Say strong foundation. A sure foundation in Jesus Christ. If you turn with me in your Bibles in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9 to 11, I want to read that to you. Are you there? I'm there already. <laughs> <clears throat> Listen to what Paul say here. I love what Paul do. Uh, many people don't understand the message of grace. I, I've seen many people come to my meetings and they listen to one of my sermons and they say, this guy is way out. And, but you, you can't explain grace in one sermon. It's impossible. You just can't do it. Are you guys with me? You got, you got to preach it and, and, and explain it to people, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9 to 11 says, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God. Say the grace of God. Which was given to me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation. Say wisdom. We're going to look at wisdom too today. Like, like a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation and another builds on, builds on it. But let each one take heed how we built on it. For no other foundation can be laid than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. So here's the question I want to ask you now is, if the foundation is Jesus Christ, how does that foundation look like? We need to start that. If the foundation is Jesus Christ in the church. We will say, okay, it's, Jesus is the rock, it's solid, I stand on it. No. Can I tell you what Paul is saying here? If you study 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 2, Paul is saying to you that the foundation is the finished work of Jesus Christ. Say finished work. Finished. Everything is done right now in the spirit. I want to say to you, right now in the spirit, there is already healing. There is already forgiveness. There is righteousness. There is provision. All things has been provided for in Christ Jesus right now. Are you with me? The church, here's what I want to say to you. It's not that God is going to bring a move. Oh, we pray for a move. No, there's not a move. You are the move. Say, I'm the move. See, we, see, people say, bring a move. We're going to pray. We're going to intercede. We're going to fast till a move comes. No, I'm not going to join in with you. You can go on that hunger strike. I'm not going to join you. <laughs> Don't understand me wrong. I fast. I do fast and pray. It's very hard. But I, uh, because I like to eat. Uh, if, if I fast and pray, the second day I see really barbecue chickens fly and, and stuff like that. I, 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 I can smell a steak five miles away. It's, it's just me. I love to eat. Uh, and I do fast and pray, but I fast and pray to hear God's voice, to be sensitive to his voice. I don't fast and pray to get anything from God because we already got it. The finished work of Jesus means that on the cross, Jesus has dealt with everything through his resurrection. When he's seated on the Father, when the right now, everything right now, the church got to understand that everything that we need to make an impact in our families, communities, our cities, it's right there in the Spirit. The problem that we have is we struggle to bridge it from the Spirit to the natural. I can teach you many faith cliches and confessions and many kind of things of that. I can do that if I want to. I'm telling you right now, to bridge it is a different picture that you need to get of who God really is in your life and who he is as a person. Are you with me? Because love, if you understand love, love will begin to, will begin to uh, uh, energize, as Pastor Corey bring out that word, will begin to energize faith in you. <laughs> Are you with me? When you got a picture of Jesus, how awesome he is, and the things that you've done, it begins to energize faith in you because you are the bridge. God is not going to do it without you or me. 
The world is sitting there and they are judging the church. They are judging God. They are angry with God. Uh, uh, people have a misconcept of, of church and of God because of teachings over years. And I'm not judging church. Don't understand because I'm as guilty as anybody else. I was there myself. I've te been teaching garbage from the pulpit. Te teachings of mine for 14, 15 years ago. Please don't. If someone bring it to you, throw it in the garbage. Burn it. Because I've talk, I talk nonsense. Really. I don't know what I was busy with. Really, Jesus just put his grace on me. Let him go on. <laughs> Somewhere in the future, we will get him. <laughs> I'm just joking. So we, we need to bring. So, so the more tumultuous, tumultuous, how do you pronounce that word? Tumultuous. Tumultuous that the environment is that we are working in, the more a sure foundation we need. So you need to understand that the church is a tumultuous problem area. Okay, let me explain it to you. We are not going into the community and get the best people to come and join us. The people that is coming to our church, they are the outcasts of life. They are the dregs of despair. They are the broken, the hurt, the nobodies, the losers. That's the people that Jesus sent us to and he says, okay, now build an organization with them. <laughs> really? He's not sending you, it's, even his disciples, Jesus, he didn't send the Jesus to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the people. He sent them down to the fishermen, the hard, rough guys, their lives is a mess. And he go and get them and he said, okay, follow me. <laughs> Are you with me? This is, so you have to understand that ministry, I have to lay this foundation so that I can take you from there. So that you can come and know how to deal with this. Ministry is a place of pressures, storms, temptations. <laughs> people with hidden agendas. <laughs> really. People who come in and they have huge loads of problems that they come into. Emotional things. All kinds of stuff that is going on in their lives. And you are called to lead them. Say thank you Jesus. <laughs> We are, we are called to lead these people. We are surrounded by, by people who probably have their own agendas. I've seen, I've seen in ministry people come with their own agendas. And, 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 and all kinds of things that they come into the, into the kingdom of God. And, they, and, 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 then, and, and then they say, Pastor, you're my pastor. I'm here to serve you. But you've got a hidden agenda. Are you with me? And, and, you, and, and here's the thing is, never judge a man on his performance. You pray for the sermon to see his heart. And you know what I've seen? I've seen the Christians that look the worst in the flesh got these people with the best hearts. Over the years, I've seen that. I've seen it's the poor that give the most into the church than the rich over the years. I'm, I'm not judging. If you're rich here, God bless you. you, you, you don't, I'm rich myself, but I'm talking in the natural. I, I've learned over the years how church look like. Are you with me? <clears throat> and, and, and we need to understand that, that when we are in the, in the kingdom of God, we are the only ones, the church is the only hope for those people in our community. Amen. Welfare and, 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 and uh, the medication can take people just so far. You can thank God in Canada for the welfare and for the, the medical system and all those things that is there for people. But they can only bring them so far. Then they can't bring them further. The church is the only place where people can find peace. Where people can be made whole. Are, are you with me? There, there's no other place. So we got to change the message. Say the message. We got to change the image of God. We got to bring the true pure message out. That will bring change in lives of people. We can't do it in ourselves. So here's the thing is what we do is. Is that um, if you turn with me to 1 Corinthians 1. 26 to 29. I want to read that to you. I got 13 pages to go here. So <laughs> I, hope, I hope we're going to get through this. Um. Uh, uh, are you there? Uh, verse 26 says, For you see your calling, brethren, not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Isn't that amazing? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 26. But God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of this world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. 
that no flesh should glorify in his presence. Huh? Can I tell you something? I was a no good, nobody loser in the flesh. And Jesus came into my life. Amen. And he, and he, and he just did an amazing thing. I, I mean, I, I go back to that same correctional services that I, that I worked after uh, seven years. No, after, after four years, after Bible study stuff. And then I would say four or five years, we went back into that same community and planted a church there, me and Linda. And, and those guys, some of them don't even recognize me. They say, oh, Peter, is you. You look different. I, I even change in countenance. Uh, are you with me? Because it's all of Jesus. Amen. When I came to the Lord, uh, 67 prisoners came to the Lord Jesus Christ in a matter of one week. We always would, you, would, uh, would, uh, would shake their hand at the, at the gate of the prison and say, see you again, <laughs> because we know they come back. <laughs> you know. But of the 67 pr uh, pr uh, uh, prisoners, 90% of them never came back. They, they, they left jail. One of them is a missionary on the bluff in, in Durban. Uh, he had a soup kitchen and he, and, he, and he just served people. And you know what? I did not say one word. I couldn't preach the gospel. I didn't know nothing. I just know God so loved the world. That's all that I know. And I'm saved. They asked me, sir, you changed. What happened to you? I got Jesus. Wow. Are, are you with me? So the countenance of Jesus got to come back. Religion changed your countenance. Religion gives you sour power. You... you, you you, 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 you look different. I, I look at people that is in religion. Their faces look different. Have you seen that? I've, I've seen people that have grabbed onto the, the grace of Jesus and the love of God. Their countenance is different. They're different people. Amen? And, and I want to say to you today is that, that the countenance of the church needs to change. And, 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 and it's not by how, how you're going to do it. It's about how you believe. If you believe right, you will live right. It's when we believe wrong that we live wrong. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Amen. Thank you for the enthusiasm. You may sit down now. <laughs> so the main error in the church that we have today is we take the wounded and we take the hurting people and we use them to build our dream and our goal. I'm talking from a pastor's perspective now. Are you with me? Yeah. This is what we do. Um, it won't last long because they are not stable. Under, they are not dependable. Uh, very few of them are teachable. Um, here's the point that I want to make. I cannot use people to build my dream and my vision. All of us are called to build other people's visions and dreams. Can I say it again? People say, oh, this is the vision of this church. This is where we're going. Can I tell you what's the vision of Grace Covenant Ministries? We want to build you, that you discover your place in life, that you live your dream and your destiny. I'm not here to use you. I can't use you. It's impossible. I leave people. They follow or they don't follow. I'm not going to put a demand on them. I keep on preaching the message of grace. If they believe it in their hearts, they're going to go. Are you with me? So the, the, the main thing that me and you have to understand is Ephesians 4. How many times we read that scripture, uh, God gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors for the equipping of the saints. Yeah. Are you with me? We are here to equip you. <laughs> the body of Christ is there. See people, see, see pastors. Can I tell you how pastors function? Pastors function like this. The moment that pastors see one another, it won't be long they would ask how many members you have. And it won't be long if they say, okay, well, I got just 10 and he got 100, then you, you already classify himself. Oh, well, he's small. I'm big. Can I tell you what the success of ministry? Can I tell you what's the success of ministry? The success of ministry is not how many people we have. It's not how, many build, how big the building is, how much the income. The success of, of ministry is how many people do we build? I always ask people, how many of your people are walking in the Spirit, hearing God's voice, functioning in the gifts, and have a true relationship with Jesus Christ? That is success. I can sit with 500 people in the church, and if 10 of them can hear the voice of God, that's all that I really got. Are you guys with me? There's nothing in this Bible that you cannot do. If Jesus say, my sheep hear my voice, you can hear his voice. 
He made a promise that you can hear his voice. Amen? Do you agree with me? So, so here's what we need to do is we need to understand that, that every person that's in the body of Christ, they are there because God has placed them and all of us is helping that person to get into his destiny and his calling. It doesn't matter what we do with him. If we prophesy over him, encourage him, lay hands on him, teach him, the whole purpose is to bring him to the place that he functioned in his calling and his destiny that God got for his life. Amen? Yes. See, I, I know lots of big churches, but the people are dead. And I'm not judging churches. Don't. Listen, it's awesome when the church is big. When we preach the truth. Are you with me? It's awesome when, 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 when we begin to reach out. And that's awesome when it's a big church, but then we got to have the thrust right. How many of the people in that big church can minister to other people? How many in that church have the freedom, say freedom, freedom to flow in their giftings and their callings? Say freedom. Jesus came to set us free, not to bound you to an organization, an organizational structure. Are you with me? There is people that is called to serve the church on a full-time uh, uh, capacity and people who come in on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening and get things going and stuff. But the main focus, the thrust of the church is that you become, that you come to the place, and now you have to listen to me carefully, that you are whole, say whole. A whole human being because if you are whole, you're going to make an impact on your community without even saying a thing. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Isn't that awesome? I love that. Oh, I have a dream. I have a dream of the early church when the people were full of the power of the Holy Spirit and everything was about Jesus. Are you with me? And his power. And see, and, and live that life. And it's like we are like leaven that spread the whole community. A light on a hill. We are the salt of the earth. <laughs> I love that. I just love that. So he says in Ephesians 4, uh, verse 11 to 12, I'm not going to read you everything, but he says, the equipping the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Listen to this. Till we all come to the unity of faith. Say unity of faith. And the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. To the measure of the, uh, uh, the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer, listen to this, be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. People, can I tell you something? <clears throat> this is very true. This really happened in churches. There is tricks, there is or I'm giving you the bad picture of the church. Now we're going to get to the good things. Amen? I'm, I'm just... Bear with me, all right? Uh, uh, these things are happening in the body of Christ. Amen. But the Bible says that if the fivefold ministry begin to equip the body, we will come to a place of maturity. Amen. And when there, the more mature people are in the body of Christ, these other little jackals, little things that come into the vineyard is not a problem because we know how to deal with it. Amen. We, we begin to just solve those things. Amen. So, um, uh, 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 verse, page, page two, I'm here. Amen. <laughs> uh, if your dream, say my dream. My dream, my dream is to build people. <laughs> See, that needs to be your dream. My dream is to build people. My dream is to bring people to maturity. My dream, see... Pastors need to get off this thing that we are threatened with other strong people. We, we are insecure. We, we don't want other people to pass by us spiritually. Are you with me? We, we don't want other people to, to grow beyond us. Don't you think it's awesome when people can grow beyond you? Jesus said, if I'm going away, he says, he says you will do greater works than me. <laughs> Amen. Did you think that Barnabas was staying at the level that he was all his life when he was walking with Paul? No, he went on. He, he, he grew into something greater. Paul started off as a teacher, then he was a prophet, and then he ended up as an apostle. 
Amen. We grow, we grow in, thing, in the things of God and we come to a place of maturity. But all those kind of things is for one purpose, is to build people. Amen. Hallelujah. I love that. So pastors, pastors, this is why pastors, I was hurt. Um, we don't have any children here, okay. A man's biggest reject, rejection in a young, young marriage, just youngly marriage, is when his wife rejects him for the first time to make love. It happened in all families because your wife is not always ready. <laughs> Listen, we are talking, uh, men, women are emotional beings. You, you got a road that you build it up because, <laughs> are you with me? Men, men work with their minds. It's like that. We're going to have sex now. Sure, ready. Let's go. I'm, are, are you with me? There, there's, there's no, there's no, there's, there's no problem. Are you with me? You know, men, but women are emotional beings. They, they're different, you know. Are you with me? It, it, it just don't work like that. Come on, guys. Some of you said, oh, I'm shocked. How can a man say this here, you know? <clears throat> no. and, and you know what? Here's the thing with pastors. Pastors, uh, pastors and leaders, we have people that is in our relationship. It's basically the same as a father, as a husband-wife relationship. The people that follow us, pastors can sometimes, the biggest hurt that I have in church was, I got a word from God, I'm excited, we're going to go. And I came there and the people say, no. It's like, What's wrong with these people? <laughs> no. Okay, we're going to be there Saturday and we're all going to go because God sent a Saturday, two or three show up. Are, are, you, are you with me? Because the people are not prepared emotionally, spiritually, and they're not being made whole. Are you with me? And, and, and over years in your, in your marriage relationship, you grow through things and you later on realize, okay, if your wife don't want to spare, make love to you, it's not because she don't love you. It's just she's not in the mood. She's not ready. She's not emotionally there. Are you with me? And, and the church, you have to understand that if we are not always, emo the people are not always there with you, you know? What's wrong with this guy? We have teach him. We have tell him everything. We have, we have walked this walk with him and he's still stuck where he is. What's wrong with him, you know? We want to go on. I, 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 uh, thank you. God bless you. <clears throat> do, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Some of you, I, I use that illustration. So pastors are many times hurting because, and we become as crippled. This is where I was. I was as crippled as the congregation was. I was insecure as the congregation was because I was, I was using people to build my dream. Are you with me? And I got hurt and disappointed in the people. I said, what's wrong with this? And on the end of the, why are they not supporting me? And one day the Lord spoke to me and Jesus says to me, they're not here to support you. You are here to build them. And it set me free. But I first had to learn the message of grace. I, I, are you with me? But that, by, that I'm not, I'm, I, by that I'm not saying that if we, if we begin to, to form a church, Grace Covenant Ministries, if we begin to form a church, what we do is we begin to, to form a culture. Say a culture. We begin to form a group of people. We begin to connect in relationships. Are you with me? We begin to together form one vision. And it's as you have been built up and you have been made whole and you have been made strong in the Lord, you begin to reach other people. Say reach other people. And, and you begin to build them and you begin to help them. And we become a culture. Are you with me? Say culture. We become a Jesus culture. We be, we, the life of Christ come among us. And we become a different group. That is like the light of God. Amen. In that area and in that community. So this is, this is where we are going. Amen. Praise God. Yes. So, so here's what I want to say to you. Is that you cannot have grace. I had to learn that I cannot have grace to fulfill my opinion of ministry. <laughs> I, I only receive grace to fulfill his opinion of ministry. <laughs> Are you with me? So, so it's not about, okay, more people. Let's reach out to get more people. More money in the bank. More, the, then, then it's wrong. Amen? Amen? But if I seek him and I am full of him, people will come. Automatically. Not because 
not because of a program, not because of a plan, not because uh, people, I'm telling you that I'm so sick of programs, I'm so sick of plans, I'm not so sick of, so sick of, uh, I myself was like, okay, what's the next plan? <laughs> what's the next thing that we can do to keep the people busy? We are not here to keep you busy. Are you with me? We create an environment where you worship God. Are you with me? And where they build you up. And from there you go into your family and into your community. And later on your people are strong and you have a cell group or you are an elder. And you, you visit people and you, you preach the gospel to the lost and all that kind of things. Amen. Amen. Is, isn't that what it is all about? It's so awesome. So the church is a rough place. I've seen demon manifestations in my life. I've had people attack me just before I preach. Five minutes before I preach, they attacked me because I didn't visit them that week. <laughs> because they are in the old religious mode. And then I go and preach. I didn't lose the anointing. I preached the most powerful sermon I can ever preach. Are you guys with me? People have all these ideas of... Of, uh, oh, we're going to lose the anointing if Satan attacked me before the service or if someone attacked me or anything. That, oh, I'm, no, that, that's the biggest lie you can ever hear. Amen. It, it, Christ is in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. I can't lose him. It was a free gift to receive him. He, he didn't say, I'm going to leave you. <laughs> he said, in fact, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you can do what you like. You can't get rid of him. Are you with me? So I said, Jesus, the people attack me right now. How can I preach now? He said, well, it's easy. I'm in you. Just rely on me. Just depend on me. You know, I have had the, the roughest things in my life. I've, I come from a different place. Are you with me? <laughs> we, we have seen some rough things. You know, we have experienced some rough things. We have had some stuff going on. And that's nice because it's church and it's God's bride and it's a mess. But hallelujah, we're growing. Amen. There's not one perfect person. I want to read you six, six reasons to love the church today. And I, I posted it from another guy. His name is Ben Reed. Can I read it to you? I posted it on Facebook, but I, I, I need to change it a little bit because here and there he creep a little bit of religion in there. But um, uh, number one, he says the church is messy. He says six reasons why I love the church. Number one, he said the church is messy. That's not my cell phone. <clears throat> he said, number one, he says the local church work isn't neat and tidy ever. Say ever. ever. If it grows clean, that means you are not doing the work of evangelism. <laughs> or you are disengaged from real ministry. Real ministry with real people who have real problems is a mess. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. I love that. Say I love that. <laughs> oh, it's only Peter. <laughs> he says, and I have found when people are open and honest with where God has them, the doubts and frustration they are experiencing and the, pa and the places where their most confused spiritual growth happens in a mighty way. Say open. open. Say honest. honest. Oh man, we got to take off the mask. Yes. Yeah. What you see here is what you get. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, I don't have a front. I, what, you can live with me and you can come and live in my home. You will see this is me. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, there's nothing. I, I'm past beyond those things in my life. I don't have to have a front. I don't have to show anybody anything. This is me. I, I, I can get upset. Me and Linda can have words. In the early days we have fights. Now we have words. <laughs> we, had, we had a rough time in our marriage at one stage. And, and, uh, and I say to her, okay, I tell her what we do. You take a piece of paper. You write on that piece of paper all the things that you have problems with me. And I will go and write on a piece of paper all the problems that I have with you. She said, no, you don't have, you have to spare you all that. I got one word. Two words, actually. I said, what? Is that all? That all problem that you have with me? Just two words? I, I got a whole list. I, I, I need to, in fact, I have to go and sit and write down. And she write it for me on a piece of paper. And she said, your ministry. 
that knocked me, man. He said, your ministry is more important than me. And that just, that just touched me. It changed my life that day. Are you with me? And, and, and now we have words. You know? <laughs> What's wrong with you today? Nothing. <laughs> Two days later. Oh, I just want to say to you, I was really actually upset about that. <laughs> I said, two days. I suffered for two days. <laughs> In the olden days when I was sick, oh, you, I feel so sorry for you. Oh, come, we give you a little bit of night all or something. Now, where's your faith? In the name of Jesus, get out of bed. You know, it's like, <laughs> she understands faith now. <laughs> I'm just joking. She's awesome. Number two, he says, it's not a formula. There is no one size fits all system. <laughs> there is no perfect structure, no ministry without hiccups. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. I, this one sentence you put here, I'm not going to read. You can learn principles from other churches, but copying doesn't work. What works in one church likely won't work in another. It doesn't work. We can't copy other churches. See, it's very difficult for people to to function in how we are. It, it takes a long time because we're different. Are, are you with me? And I believe everyone is different. But, but we have made a mistake over the years. We have copied the American successful church and we try to copy it over in, in Canada or in South Africa or wherever. I've tried that in South Africa. <laughs> and I realize, listen, I'm more frustrated than any other thing because it's not me. Say me. It's just not me. Amen. God got a God got a a, 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 a plan for you. Woo, what's the time, people? Huh? Huh? Okay. We we will make a break in ten minutes and then we will go on till five and we will have a nice supper. Amen. Amen. Is that lasagna cooking, brother? Cool. <clears throat> but the third one, it's not a bunch of professionals. Can I say it's not a bunch of professionals? Yes. You are not a bunch of professionals. Listen, I love, I love excellence, but I don't like perfection. There's a difference between excellence and perfection. Amen. We are not perfect people. Amen. So pastors are not professionals. We are on a journey with those we are leading. Amen. We are redeemed righteousness. He says we are the redeemed sinners leading people to the king. No, I would say we are the redeemed righteous of the Lord that lead people to the king. We are not sinners anymore. We are the righteousness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Number, number four, it's chaotic. Church is not always chaos, but ministering to and with real people is edgy. <laughs> George can be a nice guy, and then one Sunday morning, George come to church. Is there any George here? I'm not talking about any George. <laughs> it's a, George can come to church, and that morning, his wife has just upset him, and he's on the edge. Are you with me? Yeah. And you got to walk in love with George. <laughs> you want to kill him, but you, you know, it's like, it's like Billy Graham's wife says, they said, did you ever consider divorce? He says, no, not divorce, but murder, yes. <laughs> 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 Isn't that true? So, so, oh, Jesus, give me the grace. But you know what? If, if, if George is going to do this for a month, then that's a problem. Are <laughs> you with me? We, we got to talk to George then after. People have bad days in life. Amen. So uh, where were we? You can't box ministry in. Because the moment you do, you will find the box has moved. <laughs> Chaos is scary. It's uncontrollable. We try. See, here is what's the problem with the church today. We try to build a structure to make everything safe and to protect ourselves. And we build walls and we put structure out and, and rules and regulations. No, we got to cut that crap, man. Yeah. Are you with this order in the body of Christ? Listen, I won't like when people begin to do weird things when I teach because I want everybody to hear the word. Are you with me? You know, but who's, who's doing that? Only when someone, when a demon manifests, it's a different thing. Let's cast him out and go on. You know, it's a different ball game, you know. So, um, uh, can I tell you this one story? 
my neighbor in South Africa, they moved in new into our community. So the guy here, I'm a pastor. Oh man, we have got time. There's so much I can teach for hours, <laughs> but uh, tell you stories. So he said to me, "Oh, you're a pastor." He said, "I want to tell you the story. We are backslidden now. We are not. We are not going to church. But I want to tell you the story." He says, "My wife. Years ago, my wife came to Jesus." He said, and one Sunday, she said, I think you need to go with me to church. He said, he didn't want to go. So he said, when he, when he was there, sit in the, you decided to go. He said, in the audience, he said, the thoughts came over him. Go and punch the pastor in his face. He said, and he said, he said, he hold on to that white plastic chair. He said, he hold on to the side that he said, his wife said, what's wrong with you? He said, I can't, I can't talk. And he, he, that thing, tell him, go and punch him in his face, you know. And I said, well, how come you get it? He says, no, when I was a kid, my mom and dad tried to play with that Ouija board thing and nothing happened. And the next moment I see the little car run on its own and, uh, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a demon speak to me and the demon say to me, if you give me possession in your life, you can ask me anything. <coughs> it really happened. And he, he, from then on, if people do things to them, he said, get them. And that demon would burn the house down or they were in a motor car accident. This is really, this is true stories I'm telling you. So anyway, <laughs> here he is in the church, and the demons say, go and punch that pastor, you know, and he just, he said, and eventually they are out of the meeting, he said, he's full of sweat, and he, his wife said, what is wrong with you? He said, no, I can't tell you, he didn't want to tell her, he went to bed that night, and he dreamed that night, he stand on the bottom of an uh, uh, escalator, say escalator. And, 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 and the escalator was going up, and Jesus was standing on the top, and Jesus say, come unto me. And he said he couldn't. He just couldn't get on that escalator. He just couldn't get on the. So, so the, the next morning he woke up. He said, his wife, I need to see the pastor. So the pastor was not a fool. When he arrived at the church, there was five other elders with the pastor. <laughs> and um, they, he told the pastor the story. The pastor said, he said, the whole church was this white plastic church. It was a new church. He said, and when they begin to pray for him, the only thing that he can remember is that he stand up to attack them physically. He said two hours later, he came out of that trance or whatever he was in. There was not one chair standing up in that building. All the elders was out of their jackets, full of sweat. <laughs> <laughs> and he was free. Wow. And I said, you're not going to church anymore. I said, ah, oh, we're a little bit back, but we will come one Sunday. Now listen, listen to this. They show up one Sunday. I was five minutes into my sermon. He stood up and he came to me. And I thought that demon is back. <laughs> and I thought to myself, okay, buddy, before you put me down, I'm going to put you down today. <laughs> I am ready for you. And now I don't know what's going on. I can say in the name of Jesus, go and sit, but I can't do it. You know, I, do, I really don't know. And he came and he hugged me. And I thought, oh, this is the beginning. He got me in a grip now. I am done. I'm done. You know, and he hugged me. He said, thank you, Peter. He turned around to go and sit. And I, was, and, I, and I was like, and I couldn't preach further. He was like, everybody say, what happened now? I said, I don't know. It's just like. And I said, after the service, I said to me, what happened to you? He said, he said, after five minutes, the word were hitting me so hard that I was on my way to the front. And when I get there, I don't know what to do. So I argue. <laughs> and I thought the demon is going to come for me now, you know. Anyway, I wanted to test. The church is a messy place, you know. It's, it's wait till the, the light really begins to shine. You're going to see some stuff happen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. So, so here's a, the, the number five that they say, the work is never done. Say, the work is never done. The work is never done. Christ died for us. The local, local church is worth the blood of Christ. Oh, sorry, sorry. No matter what you do, who you fix, what system is just perfect, there will always be more work to do. And I love that, the guys say. There are challenges everywhere you look. And everybody is at work in progress. Pastors included. Sunday is always coming. Yeah. <laughs> Completion is boring. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, isn't it true? Number six, we are the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. Christ died for us. The local church was worth the blood of Christ. The local church, that messy, chaotic, unprofessional, constant, needing, fixed, uncontrollable, beautiful bride is worth every ounce of effort I can give, he says. 
The bride of Christ is not boring. But we are not in an effort. Say effort. This guy is a little bit religious. We receive from Jesus. Amen. And we minister to people. Amen. So, let's stand up and take a break for five minutes. And then we do the next session. And then we have supper. Did that mean anything to you so far? Yeah.